Got money on the brain? Let's talk about it. Make sure to subscribe and give us a thumbs up if you find value. Hey everyone, welcome back. Ready to dive into some serious personal finance today. We're tackling two excerpts today, Master Your Money, and the more you learn, the more you earn. And let me tell you, you guys, these really lay out a roadmap, don't they? They really do. Yeah, they really do. It's all about building a solid foundation, right? Not just about getting rich quick, but like really building something for the long term. Exactly. No get rich quick schemes here. We're talking about lasting financial well-being, which let's be honest, who doesn't want that? Yeah. And both these sources, they really stress, I feel like, master your money, especially it jumps right in. They're like, you want a solid financial foundation. You got to start with an emergency fund. Yeah. It's all about being prepared. Right. right. What if what if your car breaks down? Like yeah. right when you need it most, what are you going to do? Oh, man. Tell me about it. Happened to me last year. Talk about bad timing. Right. It's like out of all the times for your car to break down. And that's when that's when you need that emergency fund. Right. Yeah. It's not about panicking. It's about having that cushion so you can, you know, actually breathe. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And what I like is that master your money. They don't stop there. They even talk about these high yield savings yep. accounts, right? So you're already saving, but are you making that money work as hard as it can? Okay. So break it down for me. For those of us who, you know, maybe you're just starting out high yield savings accounts. What's the deal? So like most savings accounts, you get a tiny bit of interest, right? Practically nothing. But these high yield accounts, they have much higher interest rates and even a small difference. Believe me, it makes a huge difference over time, especially with this whole compound growth thing. Okay, yes. Compound growth. It's like the magic word of personal finance. But seriously, how does it actually like work? with a high yield account. It's pretty cool actually. So let's say, let's just say you've got a thousand bucks, right? You put it in a high yield savings account. Let's say it's got like a 2% interest rate. After a year, you earn $20, right? Not bad. But here's the thing. The next year, you're earning interest on $120, not just the original thousand. And it just keeps building like that. So it's like a snowball effect for your savings. Exactly. And speaking of snowball effects, master your money. They talk about automating your savings. Is that, that a game changer or what? You know what? For a lot of people, it's huge. It's like putting your finances on autopilot. You just set it and forget it, you hmm. know? You choose how much to transfer. Maybe every payday, it goes straight from your checking to your savings. You don't even have to think about it. Out of sight, out of mind. All right. <laughs> I love it. All right, so we've talked about building that emergency fund. We've got our high yield savings going. What about investing? I feel like this is where, this is where people get a little, I don't know, intimidated maybe. Yeah, it can seem complicated for sure. Master your money, though. They break it down pretty well, I think. They talk about stocks, bonds, mutual funds, real estate. Like, there's a lot. And it's good because they explain it simply, like with stocks. They say when you're buying stocks, you're basically buying a tiny piece of that company. Like, you own a little bit of it. Right, so if the company does well, your investment grows. Yeah. Makes sense. What about bonds, though? Those are always a little more confusing, I feel like. It's like... Imagine you're loaning money, right, like to a company or even the government. That's basically what a bond is. They promise to pay you back over a certain amount of time with interest. Okay, so less risky than stocks maybe, but sure. probably less of a potential payoff. Generally, yeah. You're trading potential for a bit more security. Makes sense. And then there are mutual funds. Oh, yeah, those. Which are confusing just because there are so many different kinds. It's true. Think of it like a, like a basket of investments. Instead of putting all your eggs in one basket, you're spreading it out. Less risky. You know. The diversification. Right. Yes, exactly. So how do you know like what the right mix is? Like How do you know which of these is right for you? Well, that's where things get a little more personal, right? You got to think about how much risk you're comfortable with, what your goals are. It depends, right? Like, are we talking about saving up for a down payment on a house? Or are we talking, you know, retirement way down the line? Yeah, yeah. totally different ball game, right? Yeah. Your strategy is going to be way different for a five-year plan versus like a 30-year plan. Exactly. And that long-term planning, that's where compound growth, man, that's where it really shines. Both these books, they talk about that master your money. And even the more you learn, they both touch on that. Okay, yeah, we talked about it with savings accounts, but how does it work with investing? Is it the same idea? Same basic principle. Let's say, all right, you invest a thousand bucks, right? 
and you're getting a decent return, let's say 7% on average every year. Not crazy, but not bad. So first year you make $70, cool. But here's the kicker. The next year, you're not just making 7% on that original thousand. You're making it on that $1,070. And it just builds and builds like that. So the earlier you start, even if you don't have a ton to invest right away, right. it can still make a huge difference down the road. Exactly. It's like time is on your side. Time is money. Okay, so we've got our emergency fund. We're looking at high yield savings. We're dipping our toes in the investing world. But there's another piece to this whole personal finance puzzle, yeah. right? And that's budgeting, <sighs> which I'll be honest, sometimes feels a little, I don't know. Like a drag. <clears throat> yeah, like restrictive, <laughs> you know? I hear you, but master your money. They actually do a good job, I think, of like reframing it. It's not about restriction. It's about like, Making conscious choices, yeah. you know, being intentional with your money. Okay. I like that better. Conscious spending, being intentional. That's way more appealing than like, you know, you can't buy anything. Exactly. It's like, where's your money actually going? And then is that how you want to be using it? It's about your goals, your values. So where do you even begin? Like, how do you actually make a budget that works that you can stick with? They say, start by tracking, you know, track your spending for a month, two months, Use an app, a spreadsheet, whatever works for you. Just see where it's all going. You might be surprised. Oh, I was definitely surprised. The mm. first time I actually tracked my spending, I was like, oh, my God, I spend how much on takeout? Right. It adds up. Yeah, it does. So it's not about, like, never buying coffee again. It's about making, like you said, those conscious choices. Exactly. Like, maybe you cut back on takeout a little bit, but you still go out with your friends, you know? You find that balance. Why? What works for you? And you know what else Master Your Money talks about? flexibility oh yeah because life happens right life happens you can't predict everything so your budget it can't be this rigid thing it's got to be able to move with you you know it's like your financial roadmap has to be able to handle detours exactly okay so we talked about managing our money but what about you know growing it that's where the more you learn the more you earn that's where that one comes in right 100 mm, percent that book, they get into this whole human capital thing. Human capital, what is that? Is that like, we're all stocks now. Kind of, but it's basically like your knowledge, your skills, your experience, your network, all of that. That's an asset. Just like you invest in stocks and bonds, you can invest in yourself. So it's about working smarter, not just harder. Like always be learning, always be improving. Yes. And the thing is like the world's changing so fast now, right? Like what you knew five years ago, it's not enough anymore. You're either growing or you're falling behind. That's it. But how do you even invest in yourself? Like, it seems so broad, you know? Yeah. I mean, are we talking like going back to school, taking online courses, reading every book under the sun? Like, where do you even start? Well, and that's the thing, right? There's no one right answer. It's got to be personalized. What are your goals, you know? What are you interested in? Right. Like maybe you want to get ahead in your career or maybe you're thinking about like a, a whole career change. Exactly. Or even just for fun, you know, like learn something new just because. So we're talking everything from, like you said, formal education to maybe just like workshops, conferences, even just like reading more. Don't underestimate just reading. Yeah. And networking, you know, talking to people in your field or even fields you want to be in. That's huge. Yeah. Like they say, your network is your net worth. Truth. So we've covered a lot of ground here, right? I mean, right. we're talking managing your money, making it grow, investing in yourself. Like, it's a lot. But how does it all connect? Like, what's the big takeaway here? Well, both these books, they kind of come back to this idea of, like, financial literacy. Financial literacy. Okay, that sounds kind of, I don't know, official. What does that even mean? It's just, it's like understanding how money works, right? Yeah. Budgeting, saving, investing, all that stuff. Understanding interest rates, debt, like... The basics. And it sounds like from what I'm hearing, it's not just about like the numbers, right? Sure. It's about using that knowledge to like actually build the life you want. Exactly. It's empowering, you yeah. know, like you have the power to make these decisions to shape your own financial future. I love that. So, OK, we covered a lot today, building that foundation, dipping our toes into investing and then like investing in ourselves on top of that. It's been fun. I like this stuff. Can I uh, can I leave our listeners with one last thought? Of course. Yeah, go for it. So we talked about a lot of practical tips, right? But at the end of the day, financial success it looks different for everyone. So I think the real question is, like, what does it mean to you? What are your dreams? You know, and how can you use this stuff to get there? Yeah, that's a good question. It's not just about the money. It's about the life you want to live. Exactly. All right. Well, that was awesome. Thanks for joining us for this uh, deep dive, everyone. 
We'll catch you next time for another good one.